Hi everyone, Holly Pike here again from ArtisticCutWorks.com. Welcome to my studio. Well, you've asked for it, so I'm going to give it to you. Heat transfer vinyl. Today is day 14 of a 14-day challenge to see uh, if we can keep up and do 14 videos in 14 days. And indeed, we did it. I had a blast. I hope you did too. Those videos will be up on YouTube for you over the next few weeks. They'll go up. They are still on the Facebook page, so you can scroll down and see them and uh, catch up and review if you need to. So tonight we're talking about heat transfer vinyl. Heat transfer vinyl is a little bit different than regular vinyl. Heat transfer vinyl has the adhesive built into it, but it's not sticky. It is not sticky. And it's on a plastic carrier sheet as opposed to regular vinyl that has a paper carrier sheet. This type of vinyl, you cut pretty side up. You cut it this way, right on the pretty side. Because when you're done cutting, you weed it, transfer tape, lift it off, you lift it off this way, and then put it down on top of something else. So you're lifting it exactly the way it is on the paper, taking it somewhere and putting it back down the way it was. And it has a paper backing. It is sticky. Heat transfer vinyl is different. You cut it pretty side down. This is the pretty side. You cut it pretty side down on your mat because it is infused with glue. It's dry. It's not sticky at all. It's not sticky at all. It's, it's, there's glue in here that is heat activated. That's why it's called heat transfer vinyl. Okay? So, you make your design, and when you send it to the machine, you need to do a mirror image. The reason you need to do a mirror image is because generally you're using some type of lettering or something of that nature for heat transfer vinyl. If you do lettering, if you do H-O-L-L-Y, when you weed it, you're going to flip it over to heat transfer it down. It's going to be backwards. So you need to flip your design, mirror image it horizontally, and um, the Silhouette software, the business edition for sure, asks, do you want to send this mirrored or send it as is if you choose heat transfer vinyl in the material to cut? So it'll say, do you want to send it as is? If you've already flipped it, send it as is. If you have not mirror imaged it, then tell it, yes, mirror image, but be careful because if you have placed your if you have placed your vinyl here on the mat and then you go in and send it to the machine and it says should I mirror image it and you say yes there's a really good strong possibility it's going to take the design from here and flip it over here and you won't have vinyl there so be very certain where your vinyl is on your mat because you don't want to cut your mat now Y'all, you see this piece of tape on my mat? Here's a lesson. It's my penguin duct tape. Here's a lesson. I use a paper cutter when I finish cutting my vinyl. And uh, I, I didn't do this one. One of my students did, but that's okay. I've done it. I use a paper cutter to trim my vinyl. Well, I have a little sign on my paper cutter now that says take the vinyl off the mat for this reason. It is actually was cut in half. Well, not in half, but almost in half. So I put a piece of duct tape on the back and carry on. It still works. It's not a big deal. Just be careful. Don't cut your mat. So heat transfer vinyl, you put on the mat upside down. So this is the pretty side up, right? This is the pretty side up. You need to put it pretty side down on the mat to cut. Okay. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Karen. Okay, so it's pretty side down for heat transfer vinyl. Okay, and mirror image. Let me say this again. If you're using heat transfer vinyl, you're going to pick it up and turn it over to heat transfer it. So you need to mirror your image. Anytime you use heat transfer vinyl, you need to mirror your image. Let me say this again in Serbian. 
anytime you use heat transfer vinyl, you need to mirror your image before you cut it. Okay? I know you're going to forget, but that's okay because you won't forget probably more than once. <laughs> Ask me how I know that. Okay, so heat transfer vinyl is heat infused or uh, glue infused, heat activated on the back. So you're going to cut from this side. So I cut this little design and I'm going to weed it now and we're going to put it on this little bag. This bag is a like a I don't know, canvas type bag that I got from Craft Chameleon. I think they're like $5 for five of them. They're very handy to put in your purse or your, your travel bag or, or whatever. So okay, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, weed this now and let's see what happens. This happens to be a metallic heat transfer vinyl. And you can see it's kind of stretchy. It's kind of stretchy. This is really great for t-shirts because it stretches with you when you move. The Glitter Flex that I've used for many years doesn't stretch with you. It's still great vinyl, and I still use it when I want that really pretty, pretty sparkle, but it doesn't move with your body, okay? So this is a metallic. It's a deco, I want to say it's deco metallic. Could be wrong about that. Um, if I'm wrong about that, Dawn can correct me. I get all of my heat transfer vinyl from Dawn at GlitterEyeCandy.com. Now see, this is not sticky. This is not sticky. It doesn't get sticky until heat is applied. Okay, I just made a little monogram here. Okay, so we've got our design weeded. And this is the way I cut it. It's upside down. When I put it on this, this little pouch, this is why you mirror image. I'm going to turn it over and lay it down and press it. That's why you mirror image. Now the back of the, this, the plastic carrier sheet is sticky. That's kind of nice because you can put it down and stick it down and then pick your item up to go take it to your, um, your heat press. As far as applying heat, you can do this with an iron. It's a little more time consuming, not quite as straightforward, but you can do it. If you're going to do a lot of heat transfer vinyl, if you're going to do a lot of um, items maybe for a craft show or for uh, charities or whatnot, you're going to want to get a heat press. You're going to want to get a heat press. They're not that expensive. I've had both the clamshell, and the clamshell is the type that the top slides away. And I had that for a while and I didn't like it because there was always just a little part of that top piece that slid away that was in the way. And it's hot. It's very, very hot. This will it'll burn your skin right off if you're not careful. So you want to be very, very careful. I switched to the, um, I guess this is the clam, is this the clamshell? That's the clamshell. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is the clamshell. The other one was a swing away. It swings away, duh. It swings away. Okay, so I switched to the clamshell. And the reason I switched to the clamshell is because you can easily get underneath here. Now, it's warm, but it's not burning me. This is the hot part. This is the hot part. Do not touch this. It's very, very hot. Right now, it's set on 301 degrees. So that's hot. That'll take your, take your flesh right off. But you can get in here and, and place your, your item in there very easily, carefully. Now, if you have large hands, I don't. If you have large hands, you want to be very, very careful because, um, you know, you can accidentally touch something. Okay, so my heat press is set at 301 degrees. Different types of heat transfer vinyl use different types of, um, different amounts of heat and different times of heat. Glitter Flex, which I use quite regularly, it's very, very glittery, very glittery, takes about 301 degrees. 302 degrees, and it takes about 18 seconds. And the first time you do it, you're going to think, holy moly, 18 seconds, I know this is just burning up. It's not. It really isn't. Just trust me on that. But this is the, the, um, the metallic uh, film, the deck, I think it's a, a deco metallic, and it's really thin. 
So I'm, I'm going to press it for about seven or eight seconds. I'll take it out of the heat press and I'll let it cool just so it's cool to the touch and then I'll peel it off. Don't wait till it's cold. You probably won't get it off. Okay, so let's go to the, we're going over to the heat press now. And I'm going to take my item and lay it. Actually, I'm going to turn it around because I want to put this zipper, which is a polyester zipper, out of the way of the heat press. Just, you know, just in case. Plastic zipper. I don't want to, like, toast my plastic zipper. Okay. I'm going to put it there. I'm pretty happy with that. You can measure. You certainly can measure from top to bottom and, and the sides. I'm not quite that fussy. This is a sample. Okay. And now I'm just going to lower the heat press. This knob right here determines how hard it is to press the heat press down with the handle and how much pressure is going onto your item. I already have it set. You can turn it one way to tighten it, turn it another way to loosen it. Um, I already have it set because of the last thing I did was, was uh, deco. And I'm just going to lower this down. I'm going to get my finger out of the way and lock it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Pull it up. And we'll wait. It's crooked, but you know, when there's stuff in it, when there's stuff in it, you won't know. So I'm just going to let it cool a little bit. It's still a little too hot for me to lay my hand on there and leave it. So we'll just wait a minute. Sometimes with some items, you need to put a Teflon press cloth inside. With this, I didn't need to do that. I've done this before. It's not a big deal. When I can put my hand on here like this and it doesn't hurt me, that's about the time to peel it. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? Okay, the pee didn't take, so I'm going to put it back in. The pea is peeling up, so I'm going to put it back in there. Okay, let's try it again. Sometimes that happens. You know, and if, if that does happen, then just put it back in the heat press. Just remember, um, don't put it in the heat press without this cover sheet on it. And I sometimes use a Teflon sheet. I use a Teflon sheet on the bottom of my heat press because I've had, I had with my last heat press, I had it in a class and someone actually heat pressed a design right onto my heat press. So yeah, that was interesting. And sometimes I'll put a Teflon sheet on top if it's something that is, um, you know, a little delicate. I'll do that. So I have two Teflon sheets here. Okay, let's see what we got. Wow. Still didn't want to come up. Well, that's a disaster now, isn't it? Okay, this is good. I've never had this happen. I've never, never had this happen. But that's okay, because we're going to talk about what we can do to kind of salvage this and fix it. Let's take a look. The P did not transfer down. So what I'm going to do is just try to try to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to lay it back in the heat press. Let's do it this way. Maybe it just didn't get the thing. Now I will use my Teflon cloth over this. And let's hope we get it this time. It's a little weird operating my heat press from this angle. Okay, it looks like it got it. So, I mean, things can happen. That's part of the reason I, we're doing things live, because, you know, you all 
are in the audience and you're like, wow, everything just goes perfectly for Holly. She never has any problems at all. Well, trust me, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I have all sorts of issues when I'm working in my studio. I mean, it's incredible the issues that I have sometimes. But that should make you feel like, you know, you're no different than me and I'm no different than you. So that worked great. That worked great. The monogram came out perfect. I like it. I'm going to let it cool the rest of the way. Um, something you might want to do, I've never really had an issue with this, but something you may want to do when you're heat transferring is take your item that you're going to put the heat transfer on and put it on the heat press and press it down for a couple of seconds, particularly, you know, I forget I live in Florida and it gets humid here. So fabrics maintain moisture and you can lay it down, put the heat press down on it for two or three seconds. It doesn't take very long. Um, and then that'll take some of the moisture out of the fabric and it might just might heat press a little better than it did this time. But um, that's the first time I've ever had that happen. So that's very interesting. But let's talk about um, heat transfer. I'm going to turn the press off because it's very warm over here. Um, and I have a little sign for my studio that I hang on my heat press. I hang it right here on my heat press with tape so that anybody that comes into my studio knows that that heat press is on and it was at one time hot and can burn you. So I, you know, just try to bring that to uh, some of the tension. That, that actually came out really nice. I'm really happy with that. It came out very nice. And this is kind of a, a holographic, um, like when I had it over here, you, you could see um, the different colors in there. It's kind of holographic. There are all kinds of heat transfer products. There's principal heat transfer. There's the glitter flex. This comes in uh, 20 by 12. Bring this down here. This is the, the, not the pretty side. This is the pretty side. Pretty side goes down for cutting. This is a 20 by 12. It comes in all different colors. Um, this is the, the standard glitter flex heat transfer. I love this. It's very glittery, very sparkly, very shiny. Let me grab a couple of shirts over here and show you some of the shirts. So you can see what Glitter Flex looks like on an actual product, not just a little bag. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back on. And then this one. Now this one has like a, a deco-y, this is like that metallic deco here. You can't really see it. There you go. You can see it a little bit. But this is heat transfer. And this is the sparkly Glitter Flex. Okay. So that's one. And then this one, this is all Glitter Flex. Larry asked me to make this shirt. He thought it was funny. <laughs> this is a design I did. Oh, that's a big shirt. This is a design I did for um, Dawn's Vinyl Club last February. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute because um, that's something y'all might really be interested in. My puppies. Oh, there's nothing on that one. Yay, I can do something with that. And then this is all with the Deco Sparkly. It's Deco Sparkle and the metallic like we just cut. And this was also for Dawn's Vinyl Club for Halloween this year. So those are just some of the shirts that I've done. I've done some other things that I think I showed you in a little trunk show. So you have the Glitter Flex. Then you have the Metallics. These are like the, the metallic, um, just like what I use, only just, just plain metallic, just shiny metallic. This one's kind of pretty if you like, if you like rainbow. This is kind of pretty. And I just, I roll my uh, heat transfer vinyl. Um, I roll it and use hair ties on it. That's how I store it. Okay, then we have a different kind of deco, deco-y sparkle. 
It's kind of hard to see, but back here maybe is better. This one's a rainbow, sparkle rainbow. And this one's like, a, like the holographic that I just used on my bag. This one also is kind of, kind of sparkly. I wonder if this is any better. It's maybe, yeah, sparkly. Look how sparkly that is. It's, it's almost like broken glass, and it's got different colors. Again, kind of holographic. Then there's printed vinyl, or patterned vinyl. This, has, this one has roses on it, and this one has stars. Candy cane and brick. You know, maybe you're doing a chimney with Santa. This would be awesome for that. And then this stuff is really popular now in pink and blue. This uh, kind of flannel type check, that's real popular. And then I want to share with you, you already know that my tools are from Design um, Glitter Eye Candy. It's going to be better for you to find it there. Glitter Eye Candy and Tools. You know that my weeding tools are from Dawn, and um, she's a friend of mine, but she's great to do business with. And um, if you go over there and get tools or you get anything else, please tell her I sent you because she supplies me with a lot of things so that I can teach and introduce you to new things. So please tell her that I did send you. Now, this heat press I also got from an affiliate on Dawn's website at glittereyecandy.com forward stroke tools. And it's from Heat Press Nation, and it's about $310. Now, that's not a lot of money if you're going to be doing a lot of heat pressing. If you're going to do one shirt a year, don't use a heat press. Use an iron. You're going to use an iron, and you're going to take your iron, you're going to put it down on the spot, and hold it for seven or eight seconds. Then you're going to pick it up and move it. Don't slide it. You're going to put it down and hold it. Pick it up, put it down, and hold it. There's also the Easy Press from Cricut which is really cool. I hope to get one of those and I can show you how that works. That's a pretty cool thing for traveling. Now, Dawn does a vinyl club every month. It's called Vinyl Club. <laughs> and you get, <laughs> clever, and you get to pick a type of vinyl that you're going to receive every month. I don't know the prices. I don't know. You'd have to go to glittereyecandy.com and check out the prices. She does the glitter flag, she does the printed, and this is my vinyl. I saved this for our vinyl lesson, our heat transfer vinyl lesson, because I get a pack every month from her because I do designs for her, for her vinyl club. So every month if you join her vinyl club, you will get a design with your vinyl. So how cool is this, this board kind of stuff? Pink camo, bricks. Oh, I have some ideas for that. Zebra. So I got these sheets for my vinyl club, plus the design. Um, I think that was November, and I want to say this is December. Now these are, let me measure them. These are 12 by 15 sheets of heat transfer vinyl. Now so that you know, and I can put some perspective on the cost of vinyl and the cost of her design club. A piece of vinyl, heat transfer vinyl that I showed you before, a 12 by 20 is about seven or eight dollars. You can get it cheaper some places. Sizer has some and uh, Cricut has some. I think Silhouette has some. You can get it cheaper but it's you know it's all about quality. For me, it's, it's all about quality. It's all about if for some reason something doesn't work right. I had a piece of vinyl that didn't stick. It just wouldn't stick no matter what I did. And I called Dawn and she said, hmm, you're not the only one. So there was an issue with the manufacturer. And she, and she wouldn't know that if she didn't know me. So, you know, heat transfer vinyl is expensive. You want to make sure you take your time when using heat transfer vinyl. So here's one. Oh, that's kind of cool looking. Oh, I can see some something with a fall for this. So these are the ones from this month. I have two drawers full of these vinyls. I love them. They're fun to play with. And particularly these, these patterned ones. 
you never know what something's going to look like until you actually cut the pattern and you say, oh, that's interesting, or boy, I don't like that, or wow, that's really cool. Remember when using a print, when using a, pr a print, you know, something busy, you want to keep your letters fairly big. If you have your letters really tiny, tiny, you're going to lose the print and it's not going to be as pretty. I tried to do something with candy cane and it was small and it just was kind of a disaster. So just be aware of what you're, what it is you're trying to do. So the vinyl, the heat press, and my tools tonight all came through Glitter Eye Candy, Dawn Winter. And uh, tell her I sent you if you, if you go over there. Um, she has more tools coming and... Uh, you know, I, I just I think heat transfer vinyl is, is so much fun because then you get to wear it. How cool is that? Or carry it and someone says, oh, that's pretty. Where did you get it? Well, I made it. You know, so that's kind of cool. Let me check here. Hi, Francis. This font is... I want it... I want to say it's called Holiday, and it's probably from Creative Fabrica. I want to say that's, that's what the font is. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Connie. I do not sell vinyl. I do not sell vinyl, but Dawn does. And I don't... I, so that you know, I'm promoting Dawn's tools, I'm promoting heat press, I'm promoting her vinyl. I get zero. I get zero. I get nothing from Dawn. She'll supply me with vinyl for a class, but that's marketing and promotion for her as well. Um, I don't get anything back for promoting her stuff. We're friends. We're friends. And she promotes me and I promote her, and that's what we do for our friends in the industry. We just do that. That's... We did that in embroidery, and we do that in this business as well. Karen says, I got a great deal, a great iron that doesn't have steam holes in it. That's a good point. If you're going to use your iron for heat transfer vinyl, you do not want it on steam. You want it on linen, the hottest setting possible, but no steam. Okay? And test. Take a little piece of something and test it on a like fabric. Just like you would test on embroidery design, have a towel that you test on, have a t-shirt that you test on, have this little bag that you test on and put a little piece on there and heat press it. Did it work? How did it work? Did it work the way I wanted it to work or not? Have items. I have those items. I use them. I don't just, you know, wing it. Usually. Sometimes I do, but not all. Yeah, so an iron is okay, just no steam. And you're going to need to be a little patient. Hi, Margie. And Karen, you all have heard me mention Karen McAdams. Um, she's on my digitizing team for Artistic Threadworks. And uh, she's very, very, very talented. And I just absolutely love her. She does, she has the, go away. Well, come on now. Okay. Karen doesn't have the pick, but she has the tweezers. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. If I was going to only buy one tool, it would be the tweezers. I use this only when this won't work, which is very rarely. But, you know, I like to have everything that my friends have, so I've got them both. Glitter Eye Candy has great vinyl. The patterns are gorgeous and fun. Yes, they are, Francis. Hi, Shirley. All from Dawn. All this vinyl is from Dawn, and this isn't... Uh, this isn't even all of it. Um, if Larry wanted to roll this over here, I can show you more if you want to see more. Of course you want to see more. That's half the fun. I have a little table here that rolls. Here we go. This is all the... This one is a kind of a... Very muted pink and blue, kind of waterish, watercolorish. Um, beautiful colors. The colors are just gorgeous, and they look beautiful on shirts. There's another rainbow. Different kind of like a holographic rainbowish. 
Well, this one, that one's beautiful. That one's gorgeous. So I have all this vinyl. I think these came a couple of months ago. So this is very, this one is very popular right now, this color and the black. And then look at these spider webs. Couldn't you have fun at Halloween with that? I can't wait for Halloween so I can make something. So that's, that's all of my heat transfer vinyl. But let me talk to you about this. Here, let's get the bottom one out from underneath there. Let me talk to you about my scrap drawer. This is my scrap drawer. You see this? This is the deco film, the metallic film that I just used, the same type. But look at all that usable vinyl. You can use little scrapbooking punch tools on this and then lay them down and heat, press, heat, heat transfer them, heat press them. So I keep anything that is about big enough for me to put a little rubber or a little uh, punch on there. And then, of course, anytime I cut pieces off, this is my scrap drawer. I cleaned it out, so that's why it doesn't have that much in it. But um, I keep anything that isn't a full sheet here, and I have another drawer just like it. So don't throw things away if, if they're useful. Look at this size. You could do a monogram to put on a, a pocket with that. That's certainly enough vinyl. And since heat transfer is more expensive, you're just going to want to make as much use of it as you can. Kind of making a mess here. Put these down here. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Vanna, my assistant. I live to serve. <laughs> he says, I live to serve. Pretty much. So like these pe pieces that I just took off, not sure, but that piece might be worth keeping. And this one might be worth keeping. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. These little, two little pieces, no. But, um, you know, it can, it can get expensive using heat transfer, so you want to use it and, you know, keep it as much as you can. Okay. Any other questions about heat transfer vinyl? I do get all my heat transfer from Dawn. Uh, there are other places to get it. Um, Rhinestone World and uh, Golly Swing Design sells it. And there's tons of places you can get um, heat transfer vinyl or vinyl. I just prefer to get it from my friend and support my friend. It's just, um, I'm just that way. And you know, they, they support me, so I support them. Okay, um, my question for you today is, have you experimented with glitter or heat transfer vinyl yet? Have you done it yet? Put it down in the comments. Any other comments you might have, put them down in there because you know that I do go in there and I do answer them or I do make a video out of it for you. So put your comments down in the, in the, in the comments section. Hey, you know, if, if you have friends that are in the cut machine hobby, tell them where we are. Tell them where we are. Um, I'd love to have them come over. We're almost at 1,000 members on the Facebook group, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's a big milestone. So um, I'd love to get there, you know, in, uh, by the end of the month if we could. That'd be awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining me for the last 14 days. It, w it hasn't been easy, but it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, our videos, our Facebook Lives now will go to Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. Every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Either be me live or a pre-recorded um, video for you on Wednesday nights. Maybe I'll sneak a few other things in there. We'll have to see. Um, as I start learning some new techniques, I may do some real quick daytime things and pop them in there for you all to be surprised in the evening. So that would be kind of fun for you. Um, Embroidery digitizing, also. Facebook Live Embroidery Digitizing starts Last Monday, January. Mondays, I'm looking at a note, Mondays, um, the, either the fourth or the fifth Monday in January. Not this, not this next week, but the following week. 
we'll start doing some live uh, embroidery digitizing videos as well with the generation software. Okay, let me check questions. Hi, Luann. Good to see you, girlfriend. Hi, Margie. Hi, Billy. Um, Dawn does not have adhesive vinyl. She has pressure-sensitive glitter, glitter flags. So she does have that, but she doesn't have the regular Oracal. For that, I, if I were you, I would go to Rhinestone World or uh, somewhere like that locally. You can get it at, at Michael's or um, possibly Joanne's, I think. Yes, you did do some on the cruise, Luann. It's good to see you, Luann. It's good to see you. Okay, um, I think that's all I have. Again, if you have any questions for me, put them in the comments, and I'll be happy to get to them as quickly as I can. And if you all are watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the bell, so that you get the videos right when they're hot off the press. I think that's all I have. Thank you again for joining me for the last 14 days. We may do this again because that was kind of fun. It was a challenge, but it was kind of fun. So um, any ideas you have, anything you want to learn, get it down in the comments for me, and I'll see what I can do as quickly as I can. Okay? Have a good evening, everyone.